I'm awash with the stuff. The Archers is the world's longest running radio show, with more than 15,000 episodes broadcast. Despite being a rural flavour show, The Archers is recorded in the heart of the UK's second largest city, Birmingham. This week it's sales, security and sardines. Hope you like this. For want of a Saturday episode. 1. Martha and Xander are discussing the guitar which is going to Mungo. Why didn't they think of us? Says Martha. We're family after all. She continues. We are a bit young yet for guitar lessons replies Xander. Wasn't thinking of guitar lessons says Martha. Those strings can be very useful when dealing with enemy agents. She adds. Xander thinks she's been watching too many spy films. Martha thinks Xander doesn't think big enough. Today guitar strings, tomorrow the world. She thinks, eating her Heinz egg custard. 2. Snowy and Jasper are discussing Justin's sales techniques. Well, he talks about upselling and cross-selling, but what do you do when MRS Smith wants to make a suet pudding for tea and only wants some suet? Asks Snowy. Justin would try and sell her some custard powder or jam to accompany the pudding. Replies Jasper. But what if she talks for half an hour about her rheumatism and sciatica? Asks Snowy. Then he'd try to sell her some painkillers or hot water bottles. Says Jasper. But what if she talks for half an hour about her husband's piles and prostate problems? Asks Snowy. Well then you send in Susan. Replies Jasper. She's the queen of embarrassing bodies. Snowy nods wisely. 3. Rex wonders if his luck might be in with Kirsty, if she's only interested in flings. He buys her a huge box of chocolates and invites her to his now warmed up houseboat. He puts the lights down low and lights some scented candles. Saving electricity, Rex? Good man. We all have to do our bit for the environment. She says as she enters the houseboat. Anyone might think you were trying to seduce me. How ridiculous is that? She observes. Yes, ridiculous. Says Rex, hiding his condoms. 4. Snowy and Jasper are discussing Kirsty and Eric. They both seem very casual about things. Says Snowy. Well, sometimes you just want a no-strings fling and other times you want to share your water bucket with someone. Observes Jasper. Snowy nods wisely, chewing some hay. 5. Brian decides to go on the panel of Dragon's Den. I have years of experience in farming and know a good thing when I see it, even if Stella my manager, doesn't believe me. He declares to his fellow panelists. The first product is presented by a young woman wearing a low-cut blouse and stilettos. I can see you've done your homework. He smiles. But I haven't even told you anything about it yet. She retorts. No need. He says. I'm sure it's a wonderful product. It's a yes from me. Fancy a stiff one after the show. 6. Lillian and Jennifer are enjoying their massages. Not much Tata here at the moment. Says Lillian. Very disappointing. She adds. But you've got Justin. Says Jennifer. Yes. I've got Justin, yippee do. Complains Lillian. He's completely obsessed with the village shop. She adds. 
well better than being obsessed with young floozies. Says Jennifer ruefully. Well, we were a bit floozy in our day. Says Lillian. I remember your nickname. She continues. Juicy Jenny, one squeeze and she's yours. She jokes. What about yours? Says Jennifer. Lilo Lil, any excuse to lie down? Lillian nods wisely, chuckling to herself while her back is being pummeled. 7. Shula is wondering why no one has phoned her. Sure someone must need my help. Ben will be studying hard and Beth is such a lovely girl. They make a wonderful couple. I could offer them some pre-marriage counseling. She muses. Henry and Jack have heard about Lee's dilemma. We don't want the girls muscling in on our territory. Says Henry. It's taken a few years to establish our protection racket. He continues. Security firm bro. Says Jack. Security firm. We're not in the 60s now. He adds. The girls might be useful. They could bring in the customers. He muses. We're not that kind of a firm. Says Henry. We have our standards. And what would Ma think? He asks. Jack nods wisely. 9. Leonard and Tony are fixing the carriage clock. It's all in pieces on the floor. There's nothing to it. Says Leonard. No, indeed. Says Tony. But I wouldn't use that. He observes, pointing to a small metal object. Why not? Asks Leonard. It's the key for my tin of sardines. Won't get far with that. Replies Tony. Oh I don't know. Says Leonard. You can do a lot with a sardine key. He declares, mysteriously. They've got me out of a few scrapes. And great for opening those cans of lubrication. He adds. Tony nods wisely. 10. Jacob returns to his flat. Kate arrives. Everything in ship-shape order. She asks. Yes, so far. He says. But I didn't know Eric wore purple G-strings. He observes. Kate nods wisely. Oh, I just wish it was something practical I could do to help him, Caroline. I, mean, I think the Archers has had this immense popularity over the years, um, basically because it has always very accurately reflected the reality of life and living in a rural community. At whatever.